Okay, we're moving next to the next question type of the reading section, and they are inferences questions. So what are inferences questions? Personally, I think that they are the most difficult questions of the reading passage because I can see from my students, they always have troubles with inferences questions at first. So many of them do a lot of mistakes with the inferences questions and they are pretty popular. They're the second most popular question type after the details questions. So the majority of your questions in the reading will be the details questions, but the second most often question type would be inferences. And they're a little bit more advanced type of questions because they always ask you not about something that you just read, but about something that you have to guess, something that is obvious, but you still have to make your own conclusions. Okay, let's have a look at the inferences questions and discuss what do we do so that our job becomes very easy. Okay, so let's have a look at this example. Dr. Smitten and two other psychologists chose 25 children for their study. Five from Campbell, 10 from other multiracial schools in Miami, and the rest from the multiracial schools in other cities in Florida. So first, let's discuss what kind of facts or details can we find in this sentence. First of all, we can see that Dr. Smitten and two other psychologists chose 25 people for a study, right? The next detail is that five children were from Campbell. Next, 10 children were from other schools in Miami, and next, the rest were from schools in other cities in Florida. So these are the details that we easily found in this sentence, right? So this is something that is written there and we just read it and understood it. These are the details. Now let's have a look at the inferences, so the conclusions that we can make from this sentence. This is going to be something that we did not read, but that is obvious, right? This is an obvious conclusion, so we can conclude it very easily. This is called inferences. So let's have a look. What kind of doctor is Dr. Smitten? See, this is not written in the text. We don't see the information Dr. Smitten is this kind of doctor but it's easy to guess for us, right? What kind of doctor is Dr. Smitten? He's a psychologist, right? Because Dr. Smitten and two other psychologists were doing something. So we see that Dr. Smitten was with two other psychologists, which means that Dr. Smitten was also a psychologist. But it is not written in the text, right? We just guessed it because it was obvious. We guessed it from how the sentence is written. So that is why this becomes an inference, that Dr. Smitten being a psychologist is an inference. Next, how many psychologists were doing the study? Oh, there is a mistake. How many psychologists were doing the study? So how do you think how many doctors of psychology did the study? Three, right? There was Dr. Smith and two other psychologists. So we see again that it's not written in the text, right? In the text, there's nothing about free doctors or free psychologists. It just said that there was Dr. Smith and two others. So we easily count that there was three of them, but it is an inference, right? It's obvious, but it's not written in the text. So that's an inference. What and where is Campbell? So we see here that five children were from Campbell and 10 were from other multiracial schools in Miami. So we can conclude that Campbell is one of the multiracial schools in Miami, right? Campbell is a multiracial school and it is located in Miami. So again, it's not written in text, but it's easy for us to understand that Campbell is also a multiracial school in Miami. So again, this is an inference. What and where is Miami? I'm sure that all of you know what and where is Miami, but let's pretend that we don't know. We can easily guess it from the sentence, right? There were 10 children from other multiracial schools in Miami and the rest from multiracial schools in other cities in Florida. So we can see from the way the sentence is structured that Miami is a city in Florida, right? So again, there's nothing about Miami being a city in Florida. It's not written here. But from the way the sentence is constructed, we can easily make this conclusion. So this is an inference again. How many children from other cities were chosen for this study? So we can see that we have 25 children, five from Campbell, 10 from Miami. And so we also don't know how many children came from other cities in Florida. But we can see total is 25, 
5 plus 10 is 15, 25 minus 15 is 10, right? So again, there's nothing about how many children were from other cities in Florida, but of course we can easily count it and we see that of course there are 10. 10 children came from other cities in Florida. So again, nothing is written here. This is our conclusion. So in this example, I wanted to show you how do we know what is a detail and what is an inference so that you know what kind of inferences are expected from you on a TOEFL test. And of course, we have a lot of examples where you can practice this skill of making inferences. So pay attention to the examples, do them, and if you master the skill of answering the inferences questions in the reading section, again, you will have a lot of boost of your reading score on the TOEFL test, because inferences are the second most popular question type in the reading section, so you really want to nail it. Alright? Thanks for watching.